Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at the simulation of digital logic gates in PySpice. We will see how to implement AND, NAND, OR, NOR and NOT gates using subcircuits and build combinational logic circuits with two or more inputs. Recall that PySpice uses ng-spice as the backend circuit simulator. This is the list of basic circuit elements currently implemented in PySpice. This list includes transistors such as metal oxide field effect transistor or MOSFET. However, the latest version of PySpice 1.5 does not currently support the digital logic gates available in ng-spice. This may change in future versions of PySpice. Nevertheless, we can still simulate digital logic gates in PySpice. Let's see how to do that. There are three methods which can be used to simulate digital logic gates in PySpice. The first method is to leverage the native programming ability in Python and use the inbuilt Boolean operators to simulate the logic gates. This method is a simple solution but does not leverage circuit simulation capabilities in PySpice. The second method is to use the ng-spice interpreter. This method is illustrated in one of the built-in examples in PySpice. This method allows access to all the digital circuit elements in ng-spice, including the digital logic gates. However, the disadvantage is that we need to code in ng-spice syntax, which is different to PySpice syntax. Hence, this method involves learning a new simulator and can be time-consuming. In this video, we will adopt the third method, which is based on efficient implementation of digital logic gates using transistors. Recall that digital logic gates can be implemented using transistors, and this gives rise to different logic families, as listed here in this Wikipedia page. Among these, CMOS logic provides an efficient mechanism to implement digital logic gates. CMOS logic gates use complementary arrangements of N-channel and P-channel MOSFETs. The circuit symbols are shown here. There are four terminals, gate, source, drain, and substrate. The arrow points in in the N channel MOSFET. In the P channel MOSFET, the position of source and drain is reversed and the arrow points outwards. A CMOS NOT gate can be constructed using an N channel MOSFET and a P channel MOSFET connected as shown here. The DC voltage source VDD provides biasing to the transistors. A CMOS NAND gate can be constructed by connecting two P-channel MOSFETs in parallel and two N-channel MOSFETs in series. A CMOS NOR gate can be constructed by connecting two P-channel MOSFETs in series and two N-channel MOSFETs in parallel. By cascading a CMOS NAND gate and NOT gate, we can make a CMOS AND gate. Similarly, by cascading a CMOS NOR gate and NOT gate, we can make a CMOS OR gate. In this video, we are not concerned with the working of these circuits, which is covered in basic textbooks on digital electronics. Basically, high or low inputs drive the transistors into either saturation or on state and cut off or off state. The arrangements of the transistors produces the desired digital logic outputs. 
Please pause the video now if you wish to study these circuits in more detail. To implement a CMOS NOT gate in PySpice, we need a suitable model for MOSFETs. This table here is showing the MOSFET models built into NGSpice. For our simulation, we use the most basic level 1 model. This model can be accessed using the syntax shown here. Using this model, we can translate the CMOS NOT gate into a netlist as shown here. We define logic 0 and logic 1 voltages. We can use 3 or 5 volts as logic 1 voltage. We define a square wave input of nominal 1 Hz frequency using the pulse voltage source command. We define the DC voltage source for biasing. The MOSFET circuit elements are defined here. We must specify the nodes in the order of drain node, gate node, source node, and finally bulk sub or substrate node. We use the models we have defined. We run a transient simulation to get the output. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this netlist in more detail. The CMOS NAND and NOR gates can be similarly implemented using descriptive node labeling as shown. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. For digital logic gates with two or more inputs, we need a systematic way to define the inputs, covering all the rows of the truth table in the correct sequence. From the truth table, we can see that while the least significant bit goes 0, 1, 0, 1, the most significant bit goes 0, 0, 1, 1. That is, its frequency is half that of the least significant bit. Using this fact, we can define inputs A and B as shown using the two pulse voltage sources. For the least significant bit, we assume a nominal frequency of 1 Hz for simulation purposes and define the simulation step time and the final time accordingly. This principle can be extended to three or more inputs. For instance, for three in inputs, assuming a frequency of Fc for the least significant bit, then input B has a frequency Fc by 2, and the most significant bit A has a frequency Fc by 4. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. This is the Python script to simulate and verify the truth table of basic two input logic gates. The code is available in the comments section below. We have standard declarations at the top. We define the inputs as discussed. We define the CMOS NOT, NAND, AND, NOR and OR gates and we are running a transient simulation. Finally, we have the plotting commands. When we run this code, we can see the outputs, which verify the truth table of the logic gates. For instance, for the AND gate, we can see that the inputs cycle through the four rows of the truth table, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, and the AND gate output is 1, only when A and B are 1. In this plot, we can see two spikes or glitches in the NOR and OR outputs. These glitches arise because of very small differences in the propagation delays when both inputs are changing, which is occurring here.
These glitches arise in other circuit simulators as well. For instance, this is the same simulation in LT Spice. Here we are using 100 Hz frequency for the least significant bit. We can see that there are glitches in the output for some of the logic gates. These glitches can just be ignored. One way to remove them is to simply add a small noise term to make the frequencies slightly different. We go back to the PySpice code and now we introduce a small noise term for bit A like this. When we re-simulate, we can see that now the glitches have been removed. Depending upon the number of inputs, some hit and trial may be required to remove the glitches if desired and if they cannot simply be ignored. We are now ready to simulate combinational logic circuits in PySpice. Recall that a combinational logic circuit is a circuit whose output only depends on the current state of its inputs. To make this process of implementing combinational logic circuits efficient in PySpice, we code up the basic logic gates as subcircuits. There are two ways to define a subcircuit in PySpice using subcircuit or using subcircuit factory. These two methods are illustrated in this built in example. In this video, we adopt the subcircuit method. For this, we need to add this statement to the declarations. The subcircuit syntax is shown here. We give each subcircuit a name and define its connection nodes. These two lines initialize the subcircuit. The NOT gate is defined here where we have just changed circuit.mosfet to self.mosfet and adjusted the node names accordingly. Similarly, this is showing the subcircuit implementation for NAND and NOR gates. Please pause the video now if you wish to study the syntax in more detail. When implementing combinational logic circuits, often three or four input gates are required. These can be implemented using two input gates. For instance, we can define a subcircuit to implement three input NAND gate and four input NAND gate using two input NAND gates as basic building blocks. A 3-input NAND gate can be implemented using three 2-input NAND gates and this needs a total of 10 MOSFETs. A 4-input NAND gate can be implemented using five 2-input NAND gates which needs 16 MOSFETs in total. Similarly, other 3 or 4 input gates can be implemented. Let us take a look at some combinational logic circuit examples. By sequentially numbering the logic gates that are being used and using subcircuits, we can easily and efficiently translate a given circuit into a netlist. Using De Morgan's law, it is also possible to do NAND only implementations. The Python codes for these three examples with two, three and four digital inputs respectively are available in the comments section below. Let us have a look at the example with three inputs. Notice that we have imported subcircuit. We define the basic logic gates as subcircuit. Using these subcircuits, we can then define the circuit netlist for a NAND only implementation. When we run this code, we get the outputs or the timing waveforms. 
we can see that the inputs are cycling through the rows of the truth table in the correct sequence starting from 000, 001, 010 and so on. And this is the output of this digital circuit. In summary, in this video, we have seen how to use MOSFETs to simulate combinational logic circuits in PySpice. The use of the sub-circuit approach allows efficient implementation. Using this technique and basic building blocks, we can also simulate sequential logic circuits such as flip-flops in PySpice. I hope this video is helpful to your learning. Thank you for watching the video and supporting this channel.